看看有没有这种世界末日的感觉。停电的，这没有电的人都活不了了。东北电力不足啊。我操，没电了，完了下不来了。我操 ！The recent power cuts in China are disastrous, affecting at least 20 out of 34 provinces and jurisdictions, and growing in scope. We reported before that China's power shortages would become a norm in 2021, and explained the reasons. If you're interested, please check out the September 24th episode. In this video, we will briefly review the causes of China's power shortage. First, let's look at the blackouts in China and how they have affected the economy. I have been here for a long time. I have never seen this many people. They all came out to eat food. There is no power. My God, what am I going to eat tonight? I don't even know why. Because our house is all using electricity. This is happening in three provinces in northeastern China. They are currently experiencing the most severe power outages and restrictions. Around September 26th, many residents in this region received similar messages from their local power companies on their cell phones. Dear electricity customers, in order to ensure the stability of the power supply in the province, the provincial power dispatch center will restrict power consumption at irregular intervals in the near future, and the power bureau may suspend power supply at any time according to higher dispatch instructions and local load conditions. By then, areas within the power supply network may shut down at any time, so please be prepared for blackouts. Many cities in the northeastern provinces have been experiencing blackouts and power restrictions without warning since September 23rd, and the duration of each power blackout is becoming longer, from one or two hours a day, increasing to one or two days. Residents' lives are thrown into chaos. 我家小宝才一岁，为什么就不能像停水一样提前通知一下呢？这幸亏是我们家四口不害怕，这没有我老公的话，我就吓死了。Chinese media reports that local people are rushing to buy and stock up on candles. Candle producers have reported that candle orders have increased more than ten times in a week. On September 26th, a water company in Jilin Province released a notice. It reads. Irregular, unscheduled, unplanned, and unannounced power outages and restrictions will continue until March 2022, as power and water interruptions become the norm. But later, the water plant issued an apology for causing the panic. Suppliers of Apple Incorporated and Tesla Incorporated, located in two key northeastern cities, Shenyang and Dalian, complained that power restrictions and outages also hit their factories. In addition to the three provinces in the northeast, several provinces in southern, central, and eastern China have also experienced massive power restrictions in multiple locations, resulting in production shutdowns. For example, in the eastern province of Zhejiang, local printing and dyeing companies were asked to shut down their operations from September 19th until the end of the month. The government of Foshan City in southern China has asked some companies to start working two days a week and stop working five days. Some local business owners have told overseas media that they do not know the reasons. Their factories can survive for a month or two, but if the power interruptions continue any longer, they will have to close down. Um, 你要是用电一天，可能是有一千多块钱就够了。现在这情况是这样，完了，现在是限四天。我们说实话，还还能承受得起。到时间长了就，就那就这个费用我们支撑不了，就厂就不能干了。
Leaked online documents from a southern coastal province indicate that the province's power department predicts a massive power shortage lasting through October to December. Even in Beijing, residents have been notified that some areas would be without power from September 27th to October 8th due to a planned maintenance. The announcement has sparked concern among Chinese people when the power shortage has even affected China's capital city. According to mainland Chinese media, at least 20 provinces and regions, which account for over 66% of the country's GDP, have now announced some form of power restriction in recent months, mainly for heavy industry. A Morgan Stanley report, released on September 27th, found that China's steel, aluminum, and cement industries suffered the most from the power restrictions. The aluminum industry has seen a 7% reduction in capacity, and the cement industry has cut production by as much as 29%. The report predicts that the paper and glass industries could also be hit hard, leading to tighter supplies. Production of chemicals, dyes, furniture, and soybean meal have also been affected. A Goldman Sachs report published on September 28th estimates that the current electricity shortage is affecting 44% of China's industrial activity and is likely to reduce GDP by one percentage point on an annualized basis in the third quarter and by two percentage points in the fourth quarter of 2021. Hundanhi In a report released on September 24th by Nomura Securities, a financial services group and global investment bank based in Tokyo, it predicts that a storm of power shortages in the world's second largest economy and the largest manufacturer would ripple through and affect stock markets around the world, and that the global supply of textiles, toys, and mechanical components could be affected. The blackout in China is similar to the widespread power cuts that occurred in the winter of 2020, only in 2021 it came a little earlier. The Chinese officials have not been able to unify their rhetoric on the cause of the blackout. First of all, there is a widespread narrative on many social media platforms in China that due to the rapid recovery of China's economy and a large number of overseas orders flocking to the country, the Chinese government has moved ahead to limit production capacity. Therefore, this is an international battle for the pricing power of commodities, or a financial war between countries. But some Chinese who are victims of blackouts are skeptical of such statements because the current blackouts have even led to power restrictions in hospitals and traffic lights unable to function. I went to the hospital this morning for back pain, and hey, the power is out. The doctor said that the ICU and the operating room had emergency power supply, but other departments didn't have power yet, so I was told to go home and wait. An internet user in China wrote, In order to win the trade war with the US, China shuts down power to its own hospitals. Is there such logic in the entire Milky Way? The official Chinese media, including the top party media such as the People's Daily, then introduced a more specific reason. The government is controlling the total amount and intensity of energy consumption, limiting the amount of coal and electricity used by high energy consuming industries. Such a policy has been implemented in China for 15 years. Each year, the government sets a national target for total energy consumption, which is then broken down into provinces and regions for implementation. So, in reality, each province and region in China follows a different energy consumption standard. The Chinese media also claims that in 2021, China, one of the few economies in the world to have started production despite the COVID impact, has attracted a large number of international orders, resulting in a manufacturing boom and therefore a significant increase in electricity consumption. Some provinces have almost used up their annual targets in the first half of the year, so they have to urgently curtail their energy consumption in the second half. 
As a result, they have to pull the plug on electricity usage. But the smart Chinese have noticed a flaw in this argument. The Chinese government issued an early warning in the first half of the year for provinces that had consumed too much energy. So areas with imposed power cuts should be highly correlated with areas receiving such warnings, and the higher the warning level, the worse the outages should be. However, this is not the case. People find no correlations between the two sets of data. Now the province with the most severe power restrictions did not even reach the second level of warning for its energy consumption in the first half of the year. This has made people in Jilin province wonder what the province is doing by being so aggressive with power cutbacks. Moreover, the claimed policy has existed for 15 years. So why has the massive blackout only occurred in China in the past two years? In addition, China has also experienced recurring outbreaks in the first half of 2021. The claim of economic prosperity in China sounds rather doubtful. Uh, so, this policy of the Chinese government is somewhat related to the current power shortage, but it's not the root cause, maybe not even the primary cause. Later on, the Chinese official media also started to admit that the price hike of coal was one of the reasons leading to the power shortage. We analyzed this issue in the September 24th episode. China's coal industry is highly market-oriented, and its prices continue to rise in line with market conditions. However, electricity prices are a product of the planned economy and are set by the government. When the electricity generated can't cover the cost of coal, the power plants are running at a loss. The more electricity they generate, the more they lose, which is a sure route to bankruptcy. To avoid bankruptcy, the power plants have to cut their production. Currently, thermal power plants account for 70% of China's electricity generation. Although China has more than 100,000 hydropower stations, the hydroelectric power generation has been down in 2021 compared to 2020. So, is the Chinese government able to solve the problem of power shortages? On September 28th, the governor of Jilin province in the northeast said that he would press ahead with coal procurement plans from Russia, Indonesia and Mongolia. On the same day, the China Electricity Council, which represents China's power supply companies, also announced that power supply companies are now expanding procurement channels at all costs to ensure winter heating and power supply. It called on power producers to sign more medium and long-term coal procurement contracts before the winter to increase coal stocks at power plants. One businessman from the northeast of China told Reuters that Russia has to meet the demand from Europe, Japan and South Korea first and that Indonesia's coal shipments have been limited by rainy weather in the last two months, while Mongolia's coal exports are mainly transported by truck, and the volume is too small. Australia is a high-quality source of coal for Beijing. Its coal is low in ash, low in sulfur, and high in heat. Many Chinese power plants relied on Australian coal for production in the previous 10 years. Now, some equipment cannot adapt to the lower-quality coal and has stopped production. However, relations between the two countries have been at a full-blown standstill since Australia asked to launch an investigation into the origin of the pandemic in 2020. In an interview with CBS during a visit to the U.S. on September 26th, Prime Minister Morrison said, The phone's always open at our end. There is no Australian obstacle to direct dialogue at a political level between Australia and China. But the China side has not shown an interest. He also said he hadn't talked with Xi for almost two years. So, the route for imported coal does not look good. What about China's domestic coal? Chinese media reports that coal inventories at Chinese power plants are now at historic lows, with only 10 days of coal left in stock at eight provinces along China's coast. The governor of Jilin province said that he had requested the power companies to send their staff to the mines in Inner Mongolia province to implement the coal purchase and sale transportation contracts. 
In reality, the hike in coal prices in China has to do with a shortage of domestic coal, and the shortage of domestic coal has to do with the CCP's latest policies. China will strive to peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. This requires tremendous hard work, and we will make every effort to meet these goals. China will step up support for other developing countries in developing green and low-carbon energy and will not build new coal-fired power projects abroad. Along with this directive from the CCP, the development of China's coal industry has been subject to additional restrictions, such as not allowing new coal mines to be built. For example, many mines in Inner Mongolia are considered illegal by the government's new standards and require additional procedures to continue their operation. A total of 150 government department seals are required to validate an existing coal mine, which is incredibly time-consuming. The increased layers of restrictions in the coal industry have also made it more challenging to increase domestic production. A short-term increase in coal production in Inner Mongolia to supply northeast China looks very unlikely. So, why has the CCP recently taken a high-profile interest in environmental issues such as carbon neutrality? The CCP is likely eager to have the new U.S. administration remove the many restrictions on technology and trade and improve relations with the U.S. Environmental issues are something that the CCP might have perceived as the most significant breakthrough for the new U.S. president. It was also explained in the September 28th episode when we discussed the release of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou to China. Many of these events we have witnessed do not happen in isolation. If you continue to follow our channel, we can help connect the dots between these critical events. Likely, the big picture will become increasingly clear, and you may be able to foretell where China and the Chinese Communist Party are going. <laughs>